At a certain point in the campaign for Anthem, you'll hit a roadblock, the Challenges of the Legionnaires. In order to progress, you're going to have to finish these challenges, four sets of them total, each having a pretty substantial amount of basic gameplay stuff that you have to complete before you can actually enter the tombs you're supposed to go to and finish the mission. The challenges presented are things like complete three missions, collect 15 chests, or get three multi-kills. Basically, it's trying to get you to engage with the game, use your combo abilities, play world missions, stuff like that. Most of these are pretty simple objectives, like the kill 50 enemies one, or the previously mentioned complete three missions one, but some of them could be a real drag, like the collect 15 chests one, or one that asks you to revive three down javelins. In this video, I'll offer my tips and tricks to limit the amount of time you spend on this quest so you're not stuck puttering around the free roam mode looking for something to do just to finish this thing. This is my Anthem 2 mission guide. Let's get to it. So when you get this mission, you might be somewhat confused at first because it's not a standard mission as they appear on the launch screen. It's a free roam objective, so in order to get the ball rolling on this thing, you're going to have to launch it to free roam. Once you're actually in free roam, then open your map and the location of the tomb should appear on it. Now the first thing you're going to want to do is travel around and check each one of these tombs. When you interact with the door, that's when the trial information comes up. Each tomb has a trial unique to it, and it's possible if you've finished doing random stuff around the map already, that the uh, trial is already finished. When the game first came out, a lot of people struggled with this one because the objective started at square one when they started the mission up, but it's supposed to track your progress previously. Now it should be tracking everyone's progress correctly, starting at level 3, so there's a suggestion. Don't do anything in free roam until you're past level 3, which, you know, it's not that hard, but still, I'm gonna say it anyway. Anything before level 3 does not count for completion of this mission. It's a little awkward, but it's fine. You probably won't have to run around and kill 50 enemies or whatever to finish the trial. It should already be done. Now some of the other objectives, those might be a problem. Let's talk about probably the two most annoying objectives on here. Collect 15 chests and revive 3 javelins. The funny thing about these two is that they're problems for opposite reasons. Collecting 15 chests can be a pain if you've been playing the game with a group this whole time, while reviving 3 javelins is annoying if you're playing solo. If you're in a team, chest collection only counts if it's you who open a chest. If a teammate does it, it doesn't count, so that's pretty annoying. In fact, everything on this checklist doesn't count if a teammate does it, only if you do it. So if you've beaten 3 legendary opponents with a team, it doesn't count, you have to do it. 50 melee defeats have to come from you, and 9 elite defeats as well. If you hit a roadblock on some of these, I suggest just going out into the open world and looking for world events by yourself, just to make sure that you get credited for all the kills and collects. Hell, play the game on easy if you just want to make it go up faster, it doesn't really matter what difficulty is as long as you finish it. Now regarding chests, I've put together a map showing the loot trail that people have been using to get a lot of chests open quickly. And though the game made it so opening chests isn't going to give you the best loot anymore, it's still a handy map if you just want to get chests open. I'll just linger on this for a second if you want to use it. If you're having trouble with the 10 collectibles objective, then just keep in mind that there are tons of nodes in the environment. Just look for any camps or obvious enemy structures, they tend to have multiple nodes around. While you're doing that, look for chests and enemies to eliminate. Basically with this, you want to be trying to finish all your objectives at the same time, when you can. If you don't want to hunt around for chests, you can always just look for world events. Usually you're going to get a couple elites and legendary enemies that spawn when you start these up, and if you complete them, that's a guaranteed treasure chest. So that's my suggestion for the 15 chests objective. Do world events, or just follow my treasure trail map. How treasure works in this game is very simple. Chests spawn into the world every time you enter free roam. The available chests are distributed between the four players in the instance, so chests always appear in the same spots, they just might not load for you in the particular instance that you're in. So just follow the markers, if a chest isn't immediately obvious, move on, it probably didn't appear this time, and you'll collect 15 in no time. Now the 3 revives is probably only a problem for mostly solo players, or at least people who don't play on hard or in strongholds. If you want to complete this objective fast, it's not too painful. Just start up a stronghold on hard with some randoms and wait for people to die, then revive them. 
strongholds are tough, and random groups are, you know, not always the best coordinated. So you should find some easy revives pretty quickly if you do that. But if you hate other players and never want to see one ever, there is another solution. Notice how it says revive a javelin, not revive another player. You can revive NPCs and it still counts. So it's possible that you might have already finished this one if you've done a few of like the missions where you have to defend NPCs. But if you haven't, then go hunt down to protect javelin, protect Corvus agent, protect sentinels, etc. mission. The annoying thing is that you'll just have to fly around the map until you find one. But thankfully, they're not like super terribly uncommon. So I was able to find two different ones pretty quickly. So jump in, find the NPC you're, you know, supposed to protect, and take out the first wave of trash mobs attacking, because these guys are useless for our purposes. So here's the thing, if you're playing on normal, it takes a lot of hits to knock out an NPC, like a whole lot. The weird thing about the NPCs in this game is that they have super long uh, shield bars, but really small life bars. So if they're able to get the shield down, then your job is pretty much done. They only take a couple of hits from like their regular normal health to kill them. So if you want these guys to die, you're going to want to have some special enemies around to take down their massive shield bars. Yeah, this is what I'm doing. I'm going to stand behind an NPC so enemies target me, but then the NPC is the one getting shot. It's stupid, but it works. It's situations like this where you'll notice how passive the enemies actually are, which, you know, is usually not that much of a problem, but it definitely sucks when we want them to actually kill our buddies. So, yeah, just stand there and let that poor sap get blasted. When they die, revive them, and then rinse and repeat. Now, seriously, this strategy is only for the most lonery loners in the world, but if that's you, like me, then there you go, revive's done. I think those two objectives are the, really the only ones that are giving people a lot of problems. It's certainly the ones I see discussed the most online. Maybe if you don't have a build for comboing, that combo challenge can be a problem, but just be sure to switch to some gear that gives you combo opportunities depending on your class. Uh, I'm not going to get into it too much because every class is a completely different combo system. Just look into it and figure it out for yourself. It's not too difficult and uh, most classes start with the ability to combo right from the beginning with their standard equipment. So maybe just switch to those gears and that you'll normally will do it for you. Oh, if you're confused what a multi-kill is, because there's one where you have to get like three multi-kills, it's killing eight enemies in succession. You've got a 10 second cooldown between each kill, so basically you just want to be aggressive and focus on easy enemies and you'll get a multi-kill easy. And there we go. That's everything I gotta say about the trials of whatever, whoever, quests and anthem. When I hit this thing, the wind really drained from my sails. I wasn't too happy. But now that I've finished it, I gotta say it's not that bad. So hopefully some of these tips can help you out and make your time in Bastion a little bit easier. Thanks for watching everybody and take it easy.